Uh, this might be the final ride on my Sportster. What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I am on my Sportster and I know this is totally random and I hope you guys can hear me right now because I have my vents open and with this, the center median here, this thing is really freaking loud. But uh, that's right, I'm selling it. So like I said, I am selling the Sportster if you're seeing this video. This is going to go one of two ways right now. So this is paid off. It's a 2020. The reason I got this Sportster in the first place was at the time I had my 2014 Street Glide Special. At the time the thing just felt like a big pig. I just really wanted something small that I could have fun again and just rip around town. So I purchased this during COVID and uh, it was a fun bike. I did a decent amount of mods to it and uh, I loved every minute of it. One of the reasons why I got the 48 was the peanut tank usually deters people away from this bike but for me I didn't really necessarily care because I had my street glide to go riding long distance on so this was gonna just be an around town bike and this and that. Two years and three months later I feel like every time I'm on this bike I have to fill up which is becoming a huge nuisance you know because like even I want to just ride it to work and save the road glide for long distance the fact of the matter is I can't even ride to work two days without having to fill up every two days now granted you know it is cheap it's like six or seven dollars to fill up I just don't want to spend my time at a gas station every 45 to 60 miles depending how I ride but ever since I got my road glide this thing hasn't seen the road nearly as much there's just something about that Milwaukee 8 114, even though it's in stock format, that just absolutely is like a magnet for me. I ride that thing all the freaking time, although it's, you know, at 10,000, could be more, and would be more if I didn't have the Sportster. So, long story short, I'm getting tired of filling it up, and as of right now, is another reason you know which is reason why we typically get away from sportsters on highways they they're just a dog uh even with this uh, 1200 with a stage one i feel like i'm shouting into the microphone right now because i can't even hear myself think because this thing's running at 3200 rpms barely doing 70 miles an hour down the highway trying to keep up Right now, I, I've just been thinking. I've been thinking that I want to get rid of this for a Harley Dyna and start a new build for the channel in addition to the Road Glide. But as well as, while the market is in my favor, might as well try to either sell this thing or trade it in somewhere uh, for the right price. Used bikes or used cars isn't going to be worth as much as it is now, you know, in another two to three years or like it was uh, two to three years prior which brings me to my next point uh, I bought this Sportster brand new now I think the MSRP was 11.2 I obviously put some money down and got it for under MSRP right now I can trade this thing in or just sell it offload it at a dealer with no hassle because people suck on Facebook marketplace or Craigslist and get 85 to nine thousand dollars and I would technically only be losing between what I put into it about fifteen hundred to maybe twenty five hundred dollars in the course of two years and three months which it's like anything else you know you're always going to lose some type of money for possibly losing twenty five hundred dollars over the course of two years and three months and uh, the amount of time that I was able to ride this thing and enjoy it is that really the end of the world I don't know for some it may be but for me I think I would be willing to uh, part ways so where am I heading I'm currently heading to Pocono Mountain Harley-Davidson um, obviously the time that I'm recording this video the road glide is still out of service it is up at Pocono they found the cause and parts are ordered but the reason why I'm saying that is while I was up here I kind of saw something that caught my eye. It's a little older. I expressed my intentions on getting rid of this Sportster 
and having Pocono write up a number to buy it out for me. Uh, mostly because I, man, I know I could get another two grand or so probably on a marketplace, but I am not going to be that guy on marketplace that lists a sportster for 12 grand and hope that I even get 10 out of it because even I don't think that's realistic. I would be happy to get nine to 9,500 for it if I were to sell it outright. So if a dealer is willing to offer me 85 to nine, that's, that's close enough for me, for my liking. I'm the one that has to make the decision and live with that decision. I was gonna bring it up here for them to eval it and possibly buy it out anyway. However, I did see something that caught my eye. So I talked to my salesman that I bought my Street Glide this and my Road Glide from. And he said, uh, well, bring your Sportster up. You can take said bike. I'm not gonna mention what it is just yet. If I get it, that will be a separate video. And take it for a ride, and let's uh, let's look at some numbers. So uh, we're gonna see. I'm on my way there now. I could really just use the money in the bank. That was my primary intentions on doing this. However, if I'm able to kind of get something that I kind of wanted and was gonna work towards and get, you know, at some point anyway, then so be it, you know? But then again, it's like anything else. So the more money that you get for a bike, the more money the bikes cost. So I'm kind of curious to see how this will work out. Obviously, I don't have high expectations because all these dealers want top dollar for used bikes. But hopefully some of it will wash out if I get a decent trade for this. And of course, it's a Friday night at about 3.45. So of course, the traffic's naturally going to pick up. But luckily, Pocono extended their hours till 6 p.m. So we shall see. We'll make it in time, but I don't know as far as if the said deal works out. I don't know. Sometimes they try to kick you out and say, come back tomorrow. And other times they'll like say, you know, like whatever it takes. We want the deal done. We want you to leave it on the new bike. Regardless, I'll be selling the Sportster for the right price or possibly offloading it for another new toy for the channel so and, uh, I don't know we'll see where this video ends up either I gotta call my pops for a ride home or I'll be riding home on a different bike all right catch you guys soon well as you can tell I'm picking up this video back on the street glide and not on a different motorcycle so I didn't buy another bike I went through with what I said I was going to do, and I, uh, I sold the Sportster. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to buy the other bike, which I'll tell you now, it was a 2007 Dyna Lowrider. I had close to 30,000 miles on it. It had a lot of motor work done to it, but unfortunately, there was no documentation on the motor work no paperwork or paper trail saying exactly what was done to the bike just all the stuff that they were told from the previous owner from where they bought it from blah 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 which none of that really means anything to me obviously you can tell the way the bike idled and the way the bike rode that motor work was obviously done to me without the paperwork item by item what was actually done and who did the work or even what tuner was in the bike that means a lot to me, so therefore I want that reflected in the price that I'll pay. So obviously I took all of that into account. You know, they obviously wanted top dollar for it. So we were kind of just on opposite sides of the spectrum. We were able to work close to what I would have paid. However, it's not like it was a absolute clean bike. This bike still needed some work done to it. The bike itself had great bones. I still needed to put probably two or three grain into it to make it how I would want it so ultimately they wanted like close to 16 grand for this bike you know the price is a price whatever it had they had the paperwork and the bike itself being clean to where I could take it home and not have to like actually do TLC on the bike itself and I could just make my changes that I want so unfortunately that didn't work out but like I had said going up there I was still going to sell the Sportster getting close to the end of the riding year and uh, just my Sportster being worth more now than probably ever 
try to get out when I'm up at the top of what it's worth. Maybe I add a Dyna here over the winter. Maybe I don't. We'll see. Time will tell. But nonetheless, we are back down to the road glide, which is A-OK. -okay. Because there is tons of stuff I want to do to my road glide. Okay, what are you doing here? Alright, yeah, you don't have to use your turn signals. There's obviously so much more stuff I want to do to the road glide, and I really want to focus in on that. But I'm looking forward to the future of the channel, future road glide modifications, and possibly a future build if and when the time is right to add another bike back into the channel. Other channel business, I've been listening to you guys down in the comments as well as, um, you know, on my own, just trying to keep working to deliver better high quality content to you guys. I don't know if you'll be able to tell. I'll throw a side-by-side -side comparison up. But I added a one-inch riser to my GoPro mount on my helmet. Oh, so back to what I was saying before I got my kidneys punched in. I added a one-inch little riser to my GoPro mount, which uh, raised the camera up and is allowing me to tilt the camera back a little bit to hopefully deliver a better view for you guys. Let me know down below in the comments if you like the new angle. Obviously the million dollar test will be the road glide whenever I get that back um, because I am really short so hopefully that one inch can compensate for a better view for you guys. Um, if not, I don't know what else to do yet without drastically changing the position of the camera because I love where it is now on the helmet and even with the one inch little lip I can just see it in my view now so perhaps I could add another inch I'll obviously see and be able to tell when I'm editing this video which at the time I'm recording this portion of this video it is one week after or one week and a couple days after I did trade the Sportster in. Things have gotten a little bit crazy here. Um, so I'm literally recording this and editing this video the day before it goes live. So uh, I'm trying to stay dedicated for you guys. So with that being said, please smash that like button. And obviously leave down below in the comments what you think of this new uh, camera angle. But with all that being said, Make sure to comment down below in the comments what bike you would like to see me add to the channel um, to possibly replace the Sportster in the future. I really would love a Dyna Super Glide or a Dyna Low Rider, but uh, you guys let me know down below in the comments. Appreciate you guys coming along today, so make sure to smash that like button, comment, subscribe hit that bell icon so that way you guys get notified when I post new videos like this one. Make sure to ride safe, but before I say peace, let's uh, have a moment of silence for my Harley Davidson Sportster 48. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. <laughs>